You say to someone, why are you feeling this way? What's wrong with you today? And they say, I am this way because of that person, because of that circumstance. What they're really saying is that person or circumstance is actually controlling my feelings and controlling my thoughts. Well, anything that's controlling my feelings and my thoughts, I'm victim to, right? So yeah. it makes sense then that when things are good, you, you feel good. And when things are bad, you feel bad, right? So, so when you start changing the way you think and feel and it starts producing outcomes in your life, you're going to believe you're more you're, you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. And, and the hardest part of about all of this is just making the time to do it. If you're not even peaceful, there is nothing in your life that you can do in a worthwhile way. To be peaceful essentially means this, that you're not messing your mind. To be peaceful means that your system is at ease. You know how to conduct your mind, you know how to conduct your emotions, your body and your energies, you are peaceful. If you change the picture in your mind, you change the chemistry, you change the fate. So I'll give an example. If I have a picture of love in my mind, the brain releases complementary chemistry, dopamine, pleasure, oxytocin, bond with your loved one, growth hormone, which does exactly what it says. It enhances your growth. And that's why when people fall in love, the chemistry of the brain going into the blood, the culture medium, enhances vitality. People glow when they fall in love. People are healthy when they fall in love. That's just not an accident. It's the chemistry of your culture media. But now I say, but wait, what if I have a picture of fear? I go, oh, well, love chemistry doesn't come out when fear is in the picture. The brain releases stress hormones and factors that affect the immune system and growth of the system. And I go, oh, my goodness. I say, why is it relevant? Changing my thought changes my chemistry. The chemistry adjusts my biology. So if I can control my thoughts, I can control the chemistry, and therefore I control the biology. So all possibilities already exist. You don't have to create the possibility. In fact, all you have to do is become aware that it exists. The moment you do that, you, you're changing the thought and you're producing a different frequency. Now, if the person is astute enough to feel the frequency of the thought in the quantum and not wait for the experience to happen, but the thought of abundance would produce the feeling of abundance. Tell guilt, shame, the past, I've changed my mind. I'm not living condemned, listening to the accusing voices, I'm forgiven, I'm redeemed, restored, my future is bright. Tell lack, struggle, not having enough, I've changed my mind. That is not my destiny, I will lend and not borrow. What I touch will prosper and succeed, abundance, overflow, increase is coming my way. Train your mind. Train your mind not to focus on the problem and make it bigger, but focus on the solution to solve it. Stay positive, stay focused, and most importantly, stay strong. The way we've been using our thoughts are not necessarily productive. As a matter of fact, sometimes our investments of our thoughts are actually counterproductive because our thoughts create a reality that we then have to overcome. So basically it says that we must start to become aware of our thoughts. And why is this important? Because thoughts represent units of energy. Every time you have a thought, you use energy. Why this becomes relevant is if I give you a checkbook for your bank account, you don't go down the street and just write checks to people like, oh, hey, you're a nice looking guy. Here's 10 bucks for you. And oh, here, little girl, go out and buy yourself a little car. Here's a thousand dollars for you. And you don't give away your money. Why? Because giving away your money is giving away your life. So basically, you become very frugal when you have a checkbook in your hand. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is this. You have an energy budget in your body. The energy is what keeps you alive. When you start using energy and writing checks where you get no return from your energy, then it's exactly the same as writing checks out of your bank checkbook and giving away your cash. So why this becomes important is the biology of belief reveals how our thoughts create our reality. And if you start investing in thoughts, that are counterproductive, thoughts like fear, or what am I going to do, and how am I going to escape this problem, or how's this going to go wrong, and all these other kinds of thoughts that are negative kinds of thoughts, then realize this, you are actually not just using your energy for having these thoughts, but these thoughts are also what 
come into your reality. What you focus on with your thoughts, your brain will manifest as reality. James from Harvard said, believe and your belief will create the fact. All things are possible if you believe. Well, you know, I studied for a long time. I started to study this book, Thinking Grow Rich. And he talks about belief in here. He says, you're not ready for what you want until you believe you can get it. I found that the only two sources of reference we could go to to find out anything about ourselves is science and religion. They all say you've got to believe. So I kept figuring out, how do you, how do you believe? How do you change a belief? Interesting subject, because I'm going to tell you something. Your results are nothing but the manifestation of your belief system. Well, our belief system, now listen carefully, is based upon our evaluation system. And frequently when we reevaluate a situation, our belief about that situation will change. We repeat that. Our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. Frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about it will change. I began reevaluating who I was. I started to study. I never stopped studying. And I found as I reevaluated, I had a much higher opinion of myself. I found out things about me that I would have never believed if you had told me. The power that's locked up within us, the marvelous system we've got. You know the blood circulates through your veins every 33 seconds, through hundreds of miles of passageway. Dang, just like that colors all the food in and all the garbage out. Stop and think of the central nervous system. It's the most complex electrical system in the world. And you've got it. Think of your brain, an electronic switching station like that. You can change the vibration of yourself and everything around you. We have awesome powers. And it's all based on what you believe about you. Nothing is so embarrassing as watching someone do something that you said could not be done. People who embrace possibility thinking are capable of accomplishing tasks that seem impossible because they believe in solutions. When you believe you can do something difficult and you succeed, many doors open for you. Big thinkers are specialists in creating positive, forward-looking, optimistic pictures in their own minds and in the minds of others. If you embrace possibility thinking, your dreams will go from molehill to mountain size, and because you believe in possibilities, you put yourself in position to achieve them. The winners in life think constantly in terms of I can, I will, and I am. Losers, on the other hand, concentrate their waking thoughts on what they should have done or what they don't do. If you believe you can't do something, then it doesn't matter how hard you try because you've already lost. If you believe you can do something, you have already won much of the battle. First step in becoming a possibility thinker is to stop yourself from searching for and dwelling on what's wrong with any given situation. Sports psychologist Bob Rotella recounts, I tell people, if you don't want to get into positive thinking, that's it. Just eliminate all the negative thoughts from your mind. Whatever's left will be fine. If possibility thinking is new to you, you're going to have to give yourself a lot of coaching to eliminate some of the negative self talk you may hear in your head. When you automatically start listing all the things that can go wrong or all the reasons something can't be done, stop yourself and say, don't go there. Then ask what's right about this. That will help to get you started. And if negativity is a really big problem for you and pessimistic things come out of your mouth before you've even thought them through, you may need to enlist the aid of a friend or family member to alert you every time you utter negative ideas. One of the best ways to cultivate a possibility mindset is to prompt yourself to dream one size bigger than you normally do. Let's face it, most people dream too small. They don't think big enough. Henry Curtis advises, make your plans as fantastic as you like because 25 years from now they will seem mediocre. Make your plans 10 times as great as you first planned and 25 years from now you will wonder why you did not make them 50 times as great. If you push yourself to dream more expansively, to imagine your organization one size bigger, to make your goals at least a step beyond what makes you comfortable, you will be forced to grow and it will set you up to believe in greater possibilities. Most people want their lives to be stable, yet they value peace and stability at the same time. People often forget that you can't improve and still stay the same. Growth means change. Change requires challenging the status quo. 
If you want greater possibilities, you can't settle for what you have now. When you become a possibility thinker, you will face many people who will want you to give up your dreams and embrace the status quo. Achievers refuse to accept the status quo.